Hello everyone, welcome back to Islam Unbox. Today, I will be talking about some smart Muslims, couple of smart Muslims with their smart questions. And we will read the answers by a sake and by some website. Um, I don't know who answered behind that website, but the other website I know is, is uh, it is a sake from Saudi Arabia answer the questions. But let's go with uh, the questionable uh, website first. Well, the website is legit. Just the person who answers the question is questionable. Let's go with this. <clears throat> Islamweb.net Question. I heard from my childhood that we, the Ummah, the community of Muhammad will enter paradise first and that the other Umas of the rest of the prophets will enter next. The question is, will the other prophets also enter paradise after Ummah of Muhammad? As we know, the rank of the prophets is higher than ours. I do not know why this question arose in my mind. Is it waswas, devilish whisperings, or is it natural? Many questions like it frequently arise in my mind and mentally disturb me. What should I do in such case? So let me try it in case if you do not understand the question. So it is believed Muhammad will be the first to enter and then his ummah, his nation. And then the other prophet with, will enter. Let's say Moses will enter and then his ummah, which is Israelis. So, Muhammad enters paradise and then Saudis or Muslims, Saudis will enter paradise and then followed by Moses entering paradise and then Israelis entering paradise. But that kind of thing, that kind of belief, May, uh, is questionable because Muslims are also taught that prophets are higher in rank compared to to them. So how come Moses will enter paradise after the nation of Muhammad, the Ummah of Muhammad? So he is confused, right? It, it, it is right to to question stuff like that because otherwise, you know. So, let's read the answer. There you go. This type of question does not lead to doing any, to doing good deeds. So you should not preoccupy yourself with it. And there's no need to worry. The fact that you often get such questions in your mind maybe because of the whispers of the devil to distract you from what is beneficial to you in regard to matters of your religion and your worldly life. So you should be mindful of this and make every effort to repel the whispers of the devil. With regard to this issue, we did not come across any evidence or any explicit statements of the scholars on it. What is confirmed is that the prophet will be the first person to enter paradise and that his nation will be the first nation to enter it you see when he says nation he put the muslims so it means other religion people from other religion can enter heaven right anyway Let's continue. However, the fact that his nation is the first nation to enter paradise does not necessitate that they enter before the prophets, which is funny. So when other prophets enter paradise? Because the first is Muhammad, and then his nation will be the first nation to enter it. Hmm. Let's continue. What is understood from the statement of the scholars is that the prophets 
precede this nation in entering paradise. Hmm. I don't know. Let's see. For instance, instance Ibn al Qayyim said in Hadi al Arwah, "Paradise is forbidden to the prophets until Muhammad enters it, and it is forbidden to the nation, to the nations, until his nation enters it." Right? Who is Ibn al Qayyim? Ibn al Qayyim was a scholar. He was born about 60 years after the death of Muhammad. Muhammad died in year 632. And this guy was born, if I'm not mistaken, in year 691. And he died in year 750 something. I don't remember now. He wrote a book. It's called Hadi Al Arwah. Well, the name of the book, I believe, is longer than that. I just don't remember. Hadi Al Arwah. Is talking about paradise 70 chapters of it just talking about paradise i don't know how ibn al qayyim can talk like this can say paradise is forbidden to prophets until muhammad enters it when he himself never met even never even met muhammad he was born almost 60 years after the death of muhammad now let me continue before i Continue with the answer before I talk a little more about Ibn al Qayyim. On the other hand, there is an explicit hadith that was reported about the prophets preceding the people in entering paradise. Were, now watch it, were this hadith authentic? It would have put an end to any dispute or confusion, but it is at least weak. This hadith was reported by Ad-Dailami in Musnad al-Fidals from Jabir ibn Abdullah. This wording is as follows. The first to enter paradise are the prophets. If this hadith is sahih or authentic, then there's no more questions. So all prophets enter first and then the nations will enter after. So Moses, you know, everybody enter and then the nation enter. But too bad, the hadith is weak. Remember, Islam, in Islam, question, question, you question something and then they give you answer and then the answer will be actually another question. We'll create another question, more question. Now, Let's go back to Ibn al Qayyim for a couple of minutes. Ibn al Qayyim, when he said paradise is forbidden to the prophets until Muhammad enters it, and it is forbidden to the nations until he, his nation enters it. This guy obviously never read Quran. Obviously. How? Why did I say that? Easy. Let's read Surah Al Baqarah. <coughs> First, let's read Surah Al-Baqarah 285. Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 285. Let's read. The messenger believes in what has been sent down from his Lord, as do the faithful. They all believe in God, his angels, his scriptures, and his messengers. We make no distinction between any of his messengers. They say, we hear and obey. Grant us your forgiveness, our Lord. To you, we all return. So, we make no distinction between any of his messengers. Okay? So, all prophets are equal. If all prophets are equal, how come Muhammad enters first? That's him. That is against Quran. And especially when he said it is forbidden to the prophets until Muhammad enters it. So Muhammad enters first. This is even crazier. Now he's talking also. Now he was talking against one 
surah, uh, one verse. Now he's talking against another verse in Quran. Also surah Al-Baqarah, verse 253. Let's read. I will read Sahih International easier to understand. Easy English, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an immigrant. So, let's read. Those messengers, some of them we caused to exceed others. Among them were those to whom Allah spoke. And he raised some of them in degree. And we gave Jesus, the son of Mary, clear proofs. And we supported him with pure spirit. If Allah had will, those succeeding them would not have fought each other after the clear proofs had come to them. But they differed. And some of them believed and some of them disbelieved. And if Allah had will, they would not have fought each other. But Allah does what he intends. All right. <clears throat> it's little too. Anyway, you see, the, f the first sentence, those messengers, some of them we cause to exceed others. We go to the second one. Among them were those to whom Allah spoke. Did Allah speak to Muhammad in Quran? No. Allah spoke to Gabriel. Gabriel spoke to Muhammad. So, conclusion is, the conclusion is, Jesus is higher than Muhammad. But how come Muhammad enters the paradise first? According to Ibn Al-Qayyim. Eh? That's the, the problem. Now, this website cannot answer the question of the person, that person, you know. And all the quotes they gave, actually is a bad ones. Misleading. Against Quran. Ibn Al-Qayyim believed that. Then, and they believe what Ibn Al-Qayyim said, then they're, they're all against Quran. They're, they're all against Quran and, you know, Allah. So I don't know. I'm not sure if they, they will enter paradise, you know. Now, let's go to the other website. Islamka.com This website is also similar. The person who answers the question is actually a sheikh from Saudi Arabia. Let's go to the question. I have teach a group of girls about Islam once a week. This past week, one girl, one of the girls, asked me the following question to which I was not able to reply and I told her that I would look it up or ask someone. The question was, are all the prophets considered equal? If so, then why is it said that there is a prophet on its level of heaven with, with prophet Muhammad in the highest? So, remember the story about Isra Miraj, where Muhammad went to Medina, Bethlehem, the place where Moses died, and then went to Jerusalem, and then went to heaven on a single night, on a burak, flying pony? Yeah, I think you know what I'm talking about, flying pony. <clears throat> So, when Muhammad went to heaven, there are seven levels of heaven. I also made a video about Islam Miraj. I made a video about uh, caste system in heaven, in Islamic paradise. There are seven, seven levels in heaven. When Muhammad went there, on each level, he met different prophets. He met Abraham, uh, Idris, um, so many other prophets, you know, like that the hadith do not mention what prophet on what level except for Jesus and John the Baptist. 
on the second level. Right? But Moses was different on different level. So now the prophets are not equal. Right? So the question by this girl is valid. And the teacher cannot answer because all Muslims are taught to believe that all prophets are equal. But Quran says no. You know? And they, they are taught to believe that Muhammad is the most, the highest, the m prophet, the, the most everything. The most special prophet, whatever. But now, it's against other teaching that prophets are equal. But in Quran, those two Quran verses speak, uh, contradict each other. Right? One saying, we make no distinction between them. One is, you know, we raise some of them in, in ranks to whom Allah spoke. Directly, Jesus, Allah spoke directly to Jesus. Allah spoke directly to Moses. In Quran, Allah did not speak directly to Muhammad. Allah spoke through Gabriel or Gabriel. By that sense, Muhammad is actually lower, right? In, in heaven should be lower than Jesus, maybe first level. But then if you tell Muslim that, they will get mad. Yeah, they will tell you, oh, you don't understand. Now, let's read the the the, uh, the answer from Surah Al-Hajj, verse 75. Verse 75, Allah chooses messengers from angels and from men. Verily, Allah is all hearer and seer. Al-Baqarah 2, 53. Those messengers, we prefer some of them to others. See? You don't need to read the rest. You already know. Allah preferred some to others. So... Let's read Surah Al-Anam, Al -Anam, verse 687. And also some of their fathers and their progeny and their brethren, we chose them, we guided them to the straight path. And Surah Al-Nahal, Allah, Allah is not never fair, you know, Allah, Allah see people differently. Right? Look at this, Surah Al-Nahal, verse 71. And Allah has preferred some of you above others in wealth and properties. So Allah makes some of you rich, poor. Based on what? Don't know. Right? If you go to Quran, some Quran verses say, if you follow Allah, if you believe in Allah, Allah will give you, will make you, Comfortable life, comfortable, you know, will help you. But as you know, if you go to many countries like Pakistan, Bangladesh, so many poor people and they're Muslims. They have to go to other countries to be to get wealth. Imagine that. So this is not 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 really true. So and if you believe this, Anahal verse seventy one, then. Allah is uh, playing favor, you know. You know, like in, in Bible, God says, God sent rain to the wicked and the righteous. So whether you, you love God or you hate God, you believe in God, you don't believe in God, you are Christians, you are not Christians, God give you blessing the same. But not in Quran. Quranic belief, Islamic belief, is totally the opposite. 
So now we will see the answer. Continue with the answer. Let's start from here. In his wisdom, he that Adam should be the father of mankind, and his in and his wisdom, mercy and justice decreed from among Adam's progeny that sorry he should select an elite messengers and prophets among them among those whom he chose and preferred over others were the messengers of strong will hmm. really okay namely Muhammad Ibrahim Nu Musa and Isa ibn Maryam And he chose and favored them above them, all their leader, the final messenger, our prophet, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. He is indeed the leader of the sons of Adam with no boast. He will carry the banner and will be granted the power of intercession. He is the one who will attain al Maqam al Mahmud. The place position in paradise, <coughs> which will given, which will be given to one person only, and that person will be our prophet. Hence, Allah took the confidence and pledge from all prophets that if Muhammad was sent during the lifetime of any one of them, they would be obliged to follow him. <laughs> but Muhammad was by himself, right? There's no other prophets during time of Muhammad, so no other prophets, no prophets follow Muhammad. So this is the answers by a Sheikh from Saudi Arabia. But look, Al Akaf, verse thirty-five. Let's. Let's open, just for the sake of it. What was that? Let me see. 46, 35. Surah 46, verse 35. Let's see what it says, really. Thirty-five. All right, here we are. Look at this. Look at the translation. The two translation, Yusuf Ali, Sahih International. Let me read you from Yusuf Ali. Therefore, patiently preserve, persevere, sorry, preserve. Therefore, patiently persevere as did messengers of inflexible purpose and be in no haste about the unbelievers on the day that they see the punishment promised them it will be as if they had not tarried more than an hour in a single day to proclaim the message but shall be shall any be destroyed except those message except those who transgress so Sahih International said, So be patient, O Muhammad. In bracket, as were those determination among the messengers, do not impatient with them. Hmm. Really? He says Muhammad? Is it from Muhammad? Let me check. Felsbir. كما صبر أولو العزم من الرسل ولا تستعجل لهم كأنهم يرون يوم يرون 
ما يوعدون لم يلبثوا إلا ساعة من نهار بلاغ فهل يهلك إلا First of all, it didn't say Muhammad, but okay. Let's pretend this is from Muhammad. So be patient, O Muhammad, as for those of the determination among the messengers, and do not be impatient for them. Right? So we go back to this. The the verse doesn't talk, doesn't say doesn't imply that Muhammad is higher than any other messengers. That's the problem. If anything, we can go back to Al-Baqarah 253. Right? We can go back to Al-Baqarah 253. Those messengers, some of them, we caused to exceed others. Among them were those to whom Allah spoke and he raised some of them in degree so if Allah spoke to you you're higher but again Allah did not speak to Muhammad directly Jibril spoke to Muhammad not Allah again you see it's not Islam if the question is answered properly is it is not Islam if the question can be answered with a surety the answer will create more questions you know that is islam it is normal in islam you ask something they give you answer and then from the answer if you actually pay attention to the answer and then the answer is also questionable so you can you can ask more question even you know and then the, the guy who answers you will get mad. You will get mad at you. They will say, oh, you have no faith. Where's your iman? Where's your faith? You know? But Islam, in Islam, you know, Allah, you know, Allah is the best. You know? He is always one step ahead. He knows. Allah knows this kind of people will question everything. So, he sent down this verse. Surah Al-Maidah, verse 101. O you have believed, O you, who you, o you who have believed, do not ask about things which, if they are shown to you, will distress you. But if you ask about them, while Quran is being revealed, they will be shown to you. Allah has pardoned it. And Allah is forgiving and forbearing. So, see, you can only ask question about Quran and Islam while the Quran is being revealed. Now, the Quran is not being revealed anymore. So, do not ask question. Thank you very much for listening. That's all from me. For those who are smart, God bless you. And for those who are not that smart, God bless you too. Have a nice life.